Hey everybody, this is Steven from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews. Now, before we get started, uh, hopefully everybody had a great free comic book day uh, last uh, Saturday. Uh, hopefully you were able to get uh, the, 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 the free books you wanted. Hopefully uh, you supported the store that you got the free comics from. And, uh, but, you know, by buying and, and supporting him, um, uh, I just want to say that, uh, my local comic shop, Pulp Fiction, um, uh, comics in Long Beach, I was there all day ha handing out free comics, you know, uh, talking to customers, uh, helping people find, uh, new things to, to read and stuff. And it was really great. Uh, one of the great things that they do is, um, that they, uh, they, uh, get uh food donations for the uh long beach rescue mission uh they we filled about four big barrels of of uh non-perishable food and uh i don't know the exact amount but i do know that uh they raised a ton of money as a matter of fact one customer uh donated uh five hundred dollars uh, to, uh, the, the rescue mission. So, uh, it was really great all around. We got a lot of you know, great comics, the store, you know, a lot of people actually bought stuff. It was great. And, uh, uh, gave a, a lot of, uh, you know, food and money donations to Long Beach rescue mission, which is desperately needed at, you know, during these, these really tough times. So, uh, bravo to, to the customers, the people that came by, uh, thanks to the crew, you know, um, uh, Ryan runs a great store. We uh, really, uh, uh, it was it was really a great day. So hopefully you had a great day too. And uh, you know, and and that's what makes Free Comic Book Day great. You know, getting new readers into comics and uh, you know supporting your local comic shop. That's that's really to me what it's really all about. Okay, let's get to reviews uh, now. This did come out last week, but I wanted to point it out. Uh, Richard Corbin's Murky World. Uh, it's uh, so what uh, Dark Horse is doing is they're remastering. Uh, Richard Corbin's uh, work. Uh, this is the first one to come out. Uh, it's completely remastered. Uh, it literally looks brand new. Uh, um, it's not so much recolored, but the color is being restored. Uh, and uh, it's really great stuff. Richard Corbin is really just a really, he was a genius. He was a really great writer and obviously great artist. Uh, his biggest thing uh, is Den, which they are remastering. That's actually coming up next. Uh, there, if you're, uh, if the, these are really good and, and honestly, it was a really good bargain. It's only $40 list price and, uh, it, it's just really great. Uh, then there's also some, uh, supplementary stuff, sketches and things like that. So that's actually really nice. It's a really great package. Dark, Dark Horse has done a really great job of, uh, putting these out and hopefully there's going to be a ton more, uh, uh, coming out in the future. So, uh, just want to point that out. Definitely look for that at your local comic shop. If, uh, the, if they don't have it, it's on. I know it's something that can be ordered because uh, it's, uh, like I said, just came out. So it's still in print. Okay, so this week's comics, uh, we're going to start off with Green Lantern number one, uh, written by Jeremy Adams with artwork by Zermenico. And then there's a John Stewart backup uh, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson uh, with artwork by Montos. Uh, so what this is, this is a... Um, so how Jordan's back back on Earth, and what it is is the the uh, the the the. Uh the Guardians of Oa have been disbanded. They're no longer there. I don't know the story about that. That's <laughs> I, I, I haven't been keeping up on that whole thing. And so what it is, is like you, you, like the United Planets have, have taken over kind of running the Green Lantern Corps, uh, except for they've they've quarantine earth earth is like just a problem child uh so that is the reason that Hal came back so he can basically protect the earth and um really uh adams th this is really a setup uh you know to where uh this the story is going to go you know in the future so basically he he you know he he uh comes back and asks Carol Ferris for a job. Well, Carol is not too happy with him. And, uh, you know, she's gotten on with her life because Hal's been gone like forever and a day. And so, so he's also the same cocky Hal, but, you know, th things have changed and, and Hal hasn't, but he needs to. So that, that's kind of an interesting twist, uh, that, that I liked in the story. Uh, like I said, this is kind of a setup, uh, but I did like it, uh, Adams does a nice job of, you know, getting exposition out of the way, but moving the story forward and kind of reintroducing, you know, 
everybody to Hal Jordan, uh, which is nice. The, the artwork by uh, Zermanico is really, really nice. It's a really good looking book. I'm a big fan of his artwork. Uh, and I really like the John Stewart backup uh, by uh, Johnson and Montos. And so what it's, you know, uh, John Stewart has, has come back to earth and he's just kind of trying to, you know, get his life back together. And then it switches to this, um, you know, off world thing where, uh, uh, Guy Gardner and another uh, uh, Green Lantern is being attacked by these monsters. We don't know why, but we just know that they want they they're coming after John Stewart. So that's kind of a setup there. Uh, it, it really, I, I like this first issue. It was off. It's you know, it's off to a really solid start. Uh, the artwork's nice. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. And I'm 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 you know, Hal Jordan's like my favorite Green Lantern. Although, admittedly, the 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 bonus here is John Stewart's my second favorite. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, because he was a big thing in the uh, Justice League animated series. So I think his a uh, lot more people know of his uh, character. But it's it's well worth checking out this week. Uh, next up, we have Phantom Road, number three, uh, written by Jeff Lemire with artwork by Gabriel Walta. Uh, so we know that uh, the, that, uh, the, the, uh, the, the two people are kind of stuck in this in-between world. Uh, that's kind of like half half in and half out. And so last issue, they they killed one of the creatures in in what they see in their their kind of uni world. But yet we know that uh, it's it's actually somebody in the real world that gets killed. So what we kind of had, you know that's been kind of set up in the first two issues. So now this issue. Uh, really focuses on Teresa Weaver, who's an FBI agent who comes and discovers like, like the body and it's not a human body. It's that weird creature from, from like that, that kind of other dimension or whatever. And so we kind of learn that the FBI kind of knows what's going on with this whole like Phantom Road or this alternate universe. So really the story takes place in the regular universe, like our side. And, and it's really like it, after the first two issues of setting up, you know, the Phantom Road universe, this was a really great take on, uh, you know, kind of spicing the story up in some ways, because obviously it, you know, we have the, the two universes and they're kind of, they're parallel but they also kind of collide with each other. And we learned that obviously last issue. So the, the big thing is obviously with um, Teresa Weaver's character coming in, we also learned that the FBI kind of knows more than, than they're letting on. Uh, so that's really an interesting twist in the story. I really, I really dig this book. As you all know, I'm a big fan of Jeff Lemire's, uh, you know, writing. I also love his artwork. Uh, I, I really like this, and and uh, the the artwork by Gabriel Walda is just really really wonderful. This is a really good book. I'm really digging it, and I really like how you know this issue kind of turns the story into like a somewhat completely different direction. And I'm like, wow, this was great. Definitely well worth checking out. I really love this book. Uh, next up, we have Disney Villain Scar number two, written by Chuck Brown, with artwork by Trevor Fairley. So. I kind of liked the first issue. It was nice and everything. It was all set up. Uh, they really kind of struggle with the second issue. Not that it's bad. It just, it's just, it's just kind of like the story's going. It wasn't like the it wasn't like it was bad. It wasn't like it was great. It was just like okay, here's more of the same. And unfortunately, that's what happened this issue. And it, it's just kind of okay. Now, you know, I love the Lion, you know, the original Lion King and everything. And I think Scar's a great character. It's just that really Brown didn't really move the story forward. I mean, it was kind of like, okay, this is nice, but you know, it just didn't move the story forward. Uh Fairley's artwork is nice. It it gets the job done, but the the script is just really just just okay this issue. And I really, you know, it's it's kind of a shame because um uh, you know, I'd, I'd really had hopes for this uh, book, uh, but it just it just kind of turned into OK. And I, I don't know that that's that's quite good enough, it, especially considering how well Dark Darkwing Duck has has been uh, this. This one's just not not really, really cutting it. So that's that's kind of a shame. Uh, next up, we have Batman White Knight Generations presents Generations Joker. 
uh, uh, with a story by Sean Murphy, with uh, the, the script by Katana Collins and Clay McCormick, with artwork by Mirka, Mirka and Dolfo. Uh, so, <laughs> um, in a lot of ways, it's really hard for people to jump in to th these White Knight miniseries that are spinoffs from the regular series, because you kind of have to know what's going on. Um, there's not a really lot, a lot of recap here. Um, you know, uh, basically the recap is that, that Har Harley and Joker ha had kids and, uh, so Jack Napier Joker in this world, he's kind of like, what if the Joker was not, you know, the Joker in a way. And so what it is, is the two kids, Bryce and Jackie discover uh, a hologram of their dad and he basically steals a Batmobile and takes them on this adventure where they p possibly discover that they might be able to bring their dad back to life. That's the basic setup here. Uh, obviously, Harley's upset because the kids are gone and Jack Jack has somewhat kidnapped them. Um, it, so uh, she's she's going to go, she's going after him. It, it's really interesting. And like I said, you have to have really read or at least have familiarity with the White Knight universe. I don't know that you have to have read all the previous like kind of mini series offshoots. I think you just need to know the basic premise and the characters here. If you do know that, then then you know once then I really liked it. Uh, Collins and McCormick's script is really really good. It gets off. Uh, I'm really a big fan of Andolfo's artwork, and she does a really really great job here. Um, I really dug it, but like I said, it's not something you know you can just pick up if you don't know what the previous you know, continuity is. So, uh, but, uh, I do really like the, the white knight universe, uh, the, that Sean Murphy has created. And I also like how they're spinning off these stories in, into like, you know, different, different chunks. So, um, I, I, I think it's worthwhile, but just make sure that you've read the, the, you know, the kind of the setup. Uh, next up, we have something epic and number one written and drawn by, uh, Seisman, uh, Kredansky. Uh, so what this is, is Danny Dillon's a 14 year old boy and he kind of, you know, as all kids, they have imagination. Well, his imagination is very different from other people's imagination. And what it is, is there's people that have, uh, what they call epic, po epics powers. And so he actually has it where he, like, he can pick up a book and like, see, like, you know, the, the Frankenstein book and it actually, he can see Frankenstein and Frankenstein talks to him. So he kind of sees these imaginary things and the, the you know, kind of the question comes out, you know, is it something like, is it a, you know, is this, power something he can control can, what can he do with it that really is not explained in this first issue this issue really does set up you know what it does well is it sets up that you you know he kind of has this imagination uh that really becomes reality that's that's really the setup um Kredinsky's obviously no you know he did spawn for a long time the artwork's absolutely stunning in this book it's a really gorgeous book and the story is actually quite fascinating um this the, once again this is a, a setup issue but he really does a great job of just kind of getting to know D uh Donnie and uh or Danny and that that's really a big key. So he kind of and he you know sets up, sets up the story threads going forward with you know him having these epic this epic power. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. It was very very different, but really just really good. Like I said, solid story, gorgeous artwork, definitely well worth checking out this week. I really like this book. Uh, next up, we have the Great British Bump Off <laughs> number two, uh, written by John Allison uh, with artwork by Max Saren. Uh, so once again, this is, uh, you know, somewhat of a parody of the Great British Bake Off. And so what it is, is Shauna is one of the contestants and one of the other contestants in the first issue was murdered. So she's basically there to to find out why you know what what's happening with these murders finding out you know the other contestants you know what what they do what how you know that the motives and stuff like that it, it's basically it's a murder mystery it's it's basically like an agatha christie type you know uh story with a bunch of characters and then they you know people are getting killed off and then you know uh shauna has to uh uh, discover who's who's the killer. Um, 
you really have to have seen the Great British Bake Off and kind of appreciate it for what it is to to really fully appreciate what Allison is doing with the book here. Um, I'm really I really like Max Sharon. Uh, his artwork's really really just charming and cartoony. It just it really fits his story really well. I, I really I really like it, but also I'm a big fan of the Great British Bake Off, so I think that that helps. But but at the end, it's a really fun murder mystery book. You know it. It's, and 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 I like it for that. It's just fun. Uh, next up, we have Danger Street number six, written by Tom King, uh, with artwork by George Fornes. So now, before I do the review, I just want to let people know that uh, they're taking a break for a few months after the six issues uh, to to help George. You know, because I mean, he's drawn like a madman on this book uh, to give him time to to catch up. So there'll be a break for a few months. And then uh, issue seven will come out, and then they'll they'll finish off the uh, the back half of the twelve issues. Um, so there's a lot going on. So Ryan, uh, you know, f failed to to get uh, the the dead uh, green team member. Uh, Starman and Warlord was able to get him, but Star Lord was or Warlord was caught by Lady Cop. So that's going on. Uh, we finally get a hint of what the out how the outsiders are going to play into this. Uh, you know, we get to re they kind of reveal part of their plan, uh, and then you know, of course, the, uh, the Manhunter is still out. You know, killing. Uh, you know, he's just killing people left and right. Um, it, they, it's really hard to describe this book because it's one of those where you really have to continuously keep up with the the reading of this because King is weaving a really big story with a lot of characters. So there's a lot going on in every issue that really connects. And I mean, this is the, what I, I really love this book. Uh, it's, it's really tough as a monthly book, but what I like about it is this is one of those books that you're going to go back and reread and you're going to go, Oh, this is even better than when I read it the first time because of all the little things that he's littering in the story along the way. Um, and then going back to George Fernandez, it, it, he's doing a wonderful job in this book. He did the Rorschach uh, uh, series with uh, with Tom King, and he's really a great artist. And the fact that he's able to draw and kind of handle all these characters is just absolutely, a, you know, hats off to that guy because he's really doing a great job on this book. Um, I really, really like it. And uh, uh, like I said, definitely uh, well worth checking out. I'm a big fan of this book. Uh, next up, we have The Nasty, number two, written by John Lees, uh, with artwork by uh, George uh, Cambius and Adam Cahoon. Uh, so what it is is Thumper, so they discovered this tape of this horror movie that's supposedly so like mind-bending that you like it could kill you. Um, you know, and, and yet it's, you know, was never released. And then there's this, you know, you know, bootleg of it. They, the kids get the bootleg. They, uh, Thumper watches it over and over again. And it, whether it has a hallucinogenic effect, we don't know. We just know that the tape has affected him. So what he plans on doing is basically him and the other kids from the video store, they're going to make their own movie. And so the one thing about Thumper is he has basically the best way to describe it is Jason Voorhees as like his imaginary friend. Well, what we find out in this issue is that because he watched this magical horror tape, uh, he's able to bring his his imaginary Jason character to life. So when they're filming, you know, they go to the video store and they're filming a, a test scene. And what it is, is like the Jason comes to life, kills one of the guys, but then you find out it's like imaginary. It's just like it, it happens, but then it just resets everything after he yells cut. So this really, like I said, I like the first issue and it was kind of intriguing, but the, the I, I really have to, to give Lee's that he's really got a neat hook here. Um, the one thing I, I'm not totally sold on, uh, it, like the artwork's not bad. It's just kind of okay. Um, it gets the job done and everything. I just kind of wish it was a, like a little more, uh, exciting. Um, uh, but, but it gets the job done and it conveys the story. So it does, it does that. Um, overall I, I'm, you know, being, being like a horror fan, I actually 
like the twist that he he brought in this issue so we'll kind of see where he takes it from here so uh uh i think it's if you're if you're a horror person you definitely this is well worth checking out this was the second issue was a really nice surprise uh next up we have superman lost number three uh written by christopher priest with uh, artwork by Carlo uh, Peg Peglion uh, and Jason Paz doing inks. Uh, so what this is, um, is, so Superman has basically, you know, as we learned in the first issue, he was kind of transported light years away from, from Earth. So now he's trying to get back. In the last issue, he he got a suit from a guy that, that basically helps him capture uh, uh, solar energy so it can he can recharge himself you know that's how superman gets his powers from the yellow sun and so this issue uh, you know so it has like a little um computer and he asks the computer how far away he is and all this kind of stuff and he discovers the dolphins and we kind of know the dolphins from the some uh lobo stories in the past where he's run into the dolphins and they take him to this uh, he they end up taking him to this planet while trying to get him closer because they can travel very fast through space and we find out that the dolphins are basically eating the the micro creatures on this planet so superman has to like you know the micro creatures are you know they're they're killing the the dolphins and superman has to find a way to help them both you know, do this. Um, this is really an inner, it's very big soap opera story, but it's also very, it's kind of big and small at the same time. And it really is quite interesting how priest is, is really kind of getting into the psyche of Superman. What I like about this is it's not just, you know, Superman being super and like beating, you know, villains up and stuff. It's really kind of a soul searching type story. And I really, really like that. And um, uh, Paglion's artwork is really, this is a really gorgeous book. I'm really, I'm really quite surprised and, and very impressed with this book. It's well worth checking out. This is this I, book I really, really like. Great, big recommendation on this. Uh, next up, we have Ghost Lore, number one, written by Colin Bunn, uh, with artwork by Leo Max. And at this point, I'm wondering what, <laughs> it's almost every week we have a new Colin Bunn uh, series. Um, so what this is, is, um, uh, Harmony and, uh, her dad and her mom, mom and her, ba uh, brother, younger brother are, uh, traveling, uh, home. Uh, he, his, uh, her dad's a, a preacher and they're traveling home and she sees this like ghost kid in the middle of the, in the street on, on the road. And then she crashes and, and the mom and the, the, the brother are killed. But what we find out is that Harmony and Lucas, her dad, have this ability to see kind of ghosts and kind of help them with, you know, pass to the other side, so to speak. And so that that's a setup. We also, there's an interesting backstory uh, where we, uh, we get to see Lucas's past. And that particular, uh, I do want to point out that the artwork on that one is um, illustrated by Brian Hurt. Uh, so he does that kind of flashback story of Lucas, uh, and I really don't want to say much about the story because it's really kind of weird and bizarre, but it really uh, adds to that Lucas has kind of had these powers, but has kind of somewhat kept him in check. And, and obviously he's somewhat passed them down to Harmony. And so it's it's really it's really an interesting story. The the big win for me is uh, Leo Max artwork. He did uh, Basketful of Heads, uh, one of those Joe uh, Hill House uh, comics over at DC, and I really really like his uh, artwork a lot. And it was really an interesting setup. I, I liked it um, that it was really kind of creepy and stuff like that. And uh, it, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. And and uh, as I've said before, Colin Bunn writes a lot of stuff. Some of it, some of it's really good. Some of it's kind of okay. This one definitely is in the very good category. I really like this first issue. And like I said, uh, Leo Max artwork is is really really great on this book, and, and it's well worth checking out. Uh, next up, we have Spirit World, number one, uh, written by Alyssa Wong with artwork by uh, Han Han Uh So this is the first of the Dawn of DC. Uh, what they're trying to do is um, 
the there's there's three books that are coming out that are uh, done by uh, Pacific Asian creators, and it has more of a you know flavor of of that you know culture and stuff. And so what it is is um, Xanthi is uh, from the spirit world, but she's kind of trapped in the 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 real world uh, now. And she's working with Constantine to kind of get back to the spirit world. And what she, one of her kind of powers is she's able to make things out of paper. Um, kind of like think of like how, you know, origami is made and she'll make something and then it'll turn into an umbrella. And uh, so she's trying to get back. And then we find uh, then Cass Kane, uh, who uh, Batgirl is trapped in the spirit world. So she's trying to get back. So Xanthi's trying to get there to help her get back. So that's kind of the setup uh, here. Uh, it was really interesting. Uh, I, I really like the story. There was a preview that came out uh, last week. You might still be able to catch that at your local comic shop. Uh, but uh, a lot of this comes out of the Lazarus Planet stuff, which I, I didn't read. I read a few of them, and there was just too much, and it was kind of okay. But the good thing is you can read this on its own. Uh, Wong does a nice job of, you know, setting everything up and giving you an explanation of like, you know, the okay, this is, you know, this happened to Lazarus Planet and Batgirl's stuck in Spirit World. Uh, so it was really interesting. I mean, there's definitely a lot of exposition in this uh, first issue, but I did really like it. And then um, Hanning, Hanning's uh, artwork is really nice. It's a really good looking book. Um, I, I was really quite pleasantly surprised. And hey, you know, when you put Constantine in a book, you kind of got me there. So uh, it's definitely worth checking out. I, I did I, I did like this first issue. Uh, next up, we have Kong, the, uh, the Great War, number one, written by Alex Cox, uh, with artwork by uh, Tommaso Bianchi. Uh, so this apparently uh, is is in the continuity of Kong of Skull Island feature. Um, and so basically what it is, it's set during World War II, and there's a German U-boat who uh, crashes on Monster Island, and they're, you know, basically they're trying to figure out you know what this place is, why what happened, and all this kind of stuff. It's it's kind of a basic setup. I wouldn't say that I, I'm really a big fan of King Kong. I really and Kong of Skull Island was really impressive. Um, but I think this first issue was just kind of okay. It was like it was all nice, but it didn't really. It, it's almost like a first chapter of a book. It was it was nice and everything, but the unfortunate thing is unlike a book, I can't just skip to the, I can't just start reading the second chapter. I have to wait 30 days. So in that respect, it was kind of a rough first issue because there really wasn't a lot that happened. It's kind of just, here's the setup and they're on Skull Island and that's it. Um, uh, so so kind of a, I, w I wouldn't say a super strong uh, first issue, uh, I think it's one of those where we'll kind of see what happens in the second issue. Uh, Bianchi's artwork's nice. Uh, it, it, it's 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 nice and everything. I think it just, I was a bit underwhelmed. I kind of wanted more than I was given in this first issue. I think that's where this, this one kind of struggled in its first issue. Uh, next up, we have Batman The Adventures Continues Season 3, number 5, written by Alan Burnett and Paul Dini with artwork by Ty Templeton. So this finishes off the third part of the uh, Hugo Strange uh, storyline uh, with him, uh, Harley Quinn and the Suicide Squad, and the Joker. So basically this kind of ties that that story that's been going the last couple issues up. And it was really a nice, satisfying conclusion. It was really nice. Um, I, you know, once again, it was really nice to see the Suicide Squad in kind of the Batman animated universe. That was a lot of fun. Uh and and it was really a satisfying it was a nice three part story which um if you kind of go back to the animated series there were a number of episodes that had two part stories so it was kind of nice to to give it a bigger uh uh you know uh, breathing room as far as uh, you know the st the ability of telling that kind of longer story uh because a lot of these have been single issues or, or double uh but uh, otherwise um look you know who isn't a fan of batman the animated series and you got you know burnett and denny who who wrote though you know ep certain episodes uh they're the creative g a lot of the creative genius behind the show ty templeton's been drawing batman the animated adventures for years he's a perfect artist this is just 
it, this is just fun. This is just a sheer delight every month to to just get to visit that universe and and have that that kindle your love for that series. And and I really just love it to death. Um and as always, this is a must-buy book every month. Uh, next up, we have Clear, number three, written by Scott Snyder, uh, with artwork by Francis Monopaw. Now, this was originally a Comicsology original, and, and Dark Horse has reprinted it. And the nice thing about this is, uh, originally, it was uh, six issues uh, on Comicology, and this one is three issues, so basically you're getting two issues at a time. So this wraps up the story of um so so basically what it is is uh sam has in his his wife kendra who died in the first issue so he's discovered that these veils there's kind of the dark side of the veil where uh you're not allowed to share veils because apparently it'll make you go crazy and so what it is is the last issue he went at the, the kind of the exact same time his wife went into the water and what it is is the widow is the one that she was trying she was basically contacting so what it is is they they have he has this uh jump drive to basically you know it changed the veil so people for a short time will see what the world's really like and the widow actually shows uh sam what the world is like and you know, it's not a pretty sight. So the veil has basically, you know, kind of the government and corporations way of basically brainwashing people to to continue to live and thrive, basically. So that's why the veils were created. We learned that this these last two issues. I don't want to really give too much more away because there's a really great ending to the story. Um, I've really enjoyed this. This has been a nice surprise. Uh, once again, I know you can read this free on, on Comicology, but I'm much more of a print person, and I'm really glad that Dark Horse has been printing these Comicology originals. And I also like the fact that, you know, um, that this came out as a regular series. I mean, you get a lot of bang for your buck for like five bucks. You're get, basically getting two issues for the price of one for the most part. Uh, you know, and there's no ads in there. So it's really, a, it's a great deal. Uh, I really like Snyder's uh, story on this. It was really good. And of course, Francis Monopol uh, is just, the artwork's absolutely gorgeous. I also like the fact that Isuzu has like supplementary material about how the artwork, you know, how they de how he designed the covers and stuff. This has been a really good series. Well, we're checking out. Um, I'm sure they're going to collect it in, in like a trade, uh, but if you can, but if you can buy the individual issues, uh, definitely check this out. This was really a nice surprise. Uh, next up, we have Star Girl uh, and the Lost Children, written by Jeff Johns with artwork by Todd Knock. This is the sixth issue, sixth and final issue. So, without giving too much away, uh, so basically the 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 kind of sidekicks of the Justice Society have been transported to this island where time is basically stopped. And uh, uh, and Stargirl went there to try to you know find out what was going on to rescue the kids. So really, this this final issue really resolves you know why why they've been taken there, what what the reasoning is, who's behind it, and everything. Once again, I don't want to give too much away because I really enjoyed this story. Uh, I will say the one thing is that uh, it looks like there might be a possible spinoff of a young Justice Society with some of the characters from here. I don't want to say too much more because not so much it's a surprise. that That is not a particular shock and not really giving too much away. But I don't want to really say much more about the ending of the story because I want you to read it. Um, I really like this. Um, if you've missed any of the issues, I know they're going to collect this. Um, I think the big question is, is... Uh, John's and not going to do like a young, uh, justice society story that, or book that that's kind of the question we have hanging from here. But I really did like this mini series. Uh, I, I really, uh, I like star girl. Jeff Johns did a great job and there was a lot of, you know, nostalgia. Uh, the, the other big thing, big win for this book is Todd Knox artwork. He's just a really fantastic artist. And to, to, to be able to draw all these characters is just like, bravo, dude. <laughs> you did a wonderful job. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this. And, and I like that it 
it did end and and but it does have the possibility of continuing from here so that's that's kind of a plus but it definitely does end this particular story which is good uh and finally this week we have batman uh the batman and scooby-doo mysteries number eight written by Sholly fish uh with artwork by eric owen uh, so this issue, uh, once again, what I love about these, first of all, it's a great all ages book. Uh, anybody could read it. Uh, and, uh, but so basically what it is, is the Scooby gang goes to Gotham, but Batman already has his, like his version of the Scooby gang. And it's like, uh, you know, basically in simple terms, hilarity ensues. Uh, these are great one and done stories. Uh, I really enjoy this book a lot. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, Sholly Fish wrote a really fun story. This issue, uh, the 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 kind of duplicate or the mirror 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 universe of of the Scooby Gang was really fun. Uh, Owen's artwork's really nice. Does it gets it you know captures that animated uh, style of of both of them. It's just really a fun book and and really I love this issue. I look forward to it every month because the one thing I really love about it beyond it being great all ages book, it's a one and done. You just you read the story and you're done. And it's great. And there'll be a new one next month. So that's going to do it this week. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, public service announcement. Uh, I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction Comics, Long Beach, California. Uh, Ryan Skinner runs a great store. A really wonderful store. Annie, Eduardo, Wendy, uh, Derek, the whole team there is just great. Uh, great customers. Uh, it, it's really a great, a great uh, store. They offer discounts on their uh, uh, trades and graphic novels and their manga. Uh, they are discounts every day. Uh, if you sign up for their pool service, you get a discount on your new books. And then not only you get a discount, but you make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, so that uh, that's a, that's a really big plus in in my book of uh, getting a discount. But you know, really having a store that you know takes care of you. Uh, that that's really the big key. That's what you want in a great comic shop. And as always, please support your local comic shop, no matter where you are. Uh, it's it's really important to support them. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, cause they're really the backbone of the industry. Once comics are made, they're the ones, uh, that they, they get them to the customers. So, uh, they, 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 uh, it, and, and, you know, the industry is struggling a little bit, you know, sales wise right now, there's not a lot of, you know, big things happening. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great books. It's just, you know, uh, not a lot of big event to draw people in. So definitely please support your local comic shop. And as we end every episode with please be kind, be kind to each other, be kind to yourself. Uh, things are tough. Trust me, I get it. Uh, you know, but, but being kind doesn't cost anything. It's good for you. It's good for other people. Uh, just, uh, you know, be kind to yourself, be kind to others and take care of yourselves. Uh, thanks for watching as always, uh, please like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, comments are uh, appreciated. Uh, and, uh, please share it with your friends. Uh, uh, spread the word of, of the reviews that way. If you're looking for, for new books or trying to figure out what to get, uh, that's why we, that's, that's why I do these review videos to kind of help you navigate the tons of comics that come out every week. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll do it again next week. Uh, this is Steven from popculturemaven.com uh, signing off. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.